Welcome to OpenBXRX on BronxNet. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, inviting you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. Following a letter from legislators regarding Bronx vaccination disparities, the State Department of Health vowed to work with the New York City Department of Health to ensure that this inequity is immediately addressed. What has changed? What's coming up? One of those legislators who signed for vaccine equity in our borough is Assembly Member Natalia Fernandez, and she's also a candidate for borough president here in the Bronx. She's joining us here today to discuss. Welcome, Assembly Member Fernandez. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So let's start with the basics. You know, the issue here is vaccine equity and equity in general. What were some of the issues you saw in our community and what exactly was happening that you thought needed to be or an alarm needed to be rang? Absolutely. Well, looking at the the numbers that were, you know, at the, the height of the pandemic throughout the summer and even now, uh, certain areas in the Bronx, especially in black and brown communities, had high infection rates, high death rates. So when we started talking about the vaccine and, you know, where it needed to be distributed, these areas were certainly a priority for many. Um, but still, you know, with the number of vaccination sites that were brought here to the Bronx, it wasn't enough. And uh, a lot of us feel that, you know, since we are the borough that overall has the highest infection rate, overall has a high death rate, we needed to be very um, practical in where we're going and how we're getting this vaccine out to the people. Thank you, Assembly Member. Now about this letter um, that you and other legislators signed recently and delivered to Governor Cuomo, what were some of the demands in the letter um, made by you and other legislators? Well, early on, the demand was get us a mass vaccine site. And as soon as the, the governor and, you know, um, the, the mayor said that we're going to get vaccines, I produced a list of locations all over the borough that were of size, that were near public transportation to give them a heads up or at least a little bit of help as to where to look to, where to go, knowing that these were large locations. Um, we were very happy to hear that Yankee Stadium, which was one of my suggestions on the list, uh, became a mass vaccine site, but that still presented a, an issue with a lot of members in my area here in the North Bronx that are seniors that couldn't travel, that were afraid to travel down to the to Yankee Stadium. So, and speaking of equity, you know, we need to hit all the big areas in the Bronx. And my partners in government, we signed the letter to get a North Bronx vaccine site as Yankee Stadium is in the South Bronx. And we're happy that we did see the mayor move and now put a vaccine site in Co-op City, which is one of the hev most heavily dense um, neighborhoods in the Bronx. But even that still is not enough. You know, it's great that we have in Co-op City is absolutely needed there. But in the Northeast Bronx, where there's still, um, you know, deserts of vaccine information or locations, we need to make sure that we're hitting all areas and not leaving anybody out. Absolutely, and I'm glad that you brought up um, the access as well, Assembly Member. As you said, you know, there are a lot of seniors that can physically access these locations and vaccination sites like 161 and Yankee Stadium. Uh, can you tell us about the new in-home Johnson & Johnson vaccinations and who qualifies for them and how they can inquire and sign up for this new program? Yes, well, I do have all this information on my website right now. So I encourage everyone, please visit Fernandez2021.com. And we have all the updated information as it's coming out from the state and the city about uh, the vaccines that are available. And the Johnson & Johnson one uh, is part of a program that, you know, giving sign up and making your appointment, it can provide door-to-door -door service of giving the vaccine right in your home. This vaccine doesn't need to be refrigerated at high, at low, low temperatures, uh, sub-zero temperatures, like the other ones, Pfizer and Moderna. So it does make it a lot easier to get around with it and get it out quicker to the people. Um, but I believe now today, the, the governor announced that eligibility opened up to 60 and older, not only 65 and older, for older uh, New Yorkers to go get the vaccine. Got it. And that's for the in-home Johnson & Johnson, that one shot that we've been talking about recently. It's not the two shot. Yes, that one's a one shot. That is the difference. Um, and, you know, people are doing the research and I absolutely encourage you to do the research. Uh, you know, the Pfizer and Moderna have been said to be uh, more effective, but this one still is very helpful and very needed for those that, uh, you know, are less compromised. Thank you, Assembly Member. And since we have you here, President Biden's new American Rescue Plan uh, does include the stimulus checks for eligible Americans, as we know, and it also includes funding vaccinations and supporting struggling communities. Can you help us break down where the $1.9 trillion are going specifically and how this uh, plan will benefit Bronx sites in particular? Well, the $1.9 trillion is for the whole country. So New York State is receiving $12 billion of that. 
Um, and that 12 billion, we are in discussion now, um, you know, in, in the assembly and the Senate um, with the governor deciphering how we can properly disseminate the 12 million, to, to, I'm sorry, the 12 billion here in the state. So we know that there's assistance needed in our healthcare system, making sure that we are providing safe staffing to, to patients that, you know, increase, that's going to be a need for the hospitals to be able to keep you know, staff on, on payroll to, to do all these shifts. We know that we need uh, assistance with um, the food shortage that's here in the state. You know, Many people are still not working. Our pantries are being, uh, there's longer lines than ever at our food pantry. So we gotta do everything to make sure that they're fully funded and stocked uh, to, to be able to handle the amount of outreach they've been getting. Um, we also know that there will be a component to make sure that this vaccine is getting to our neighborhood. So there's been discussion about mobile units. Uh, as, you know, we see our flu shot distribution every year and they're, they're doing pop-ups in the park. CVS has it. Um, you can go to your doctor's office and there's events, you know, to get your flu shot. So we want to see that same effort with the vaccine. Um, but it's all still to be determined. You know, we are in the process now in the in conference with our members to really try to make sure that we are giving as much uh, aid to all the areas that need uh, help right now. Um, something else I wanted to bring up, Assembly Member, is the fact that um, you know the equity also comes in the form of having access to the the locations, but it it also comes in the form of language access. I've seen a lot of issues with people not understanding Spanish and, you know, coming up and creating a vaccine hub in, let's say, in Alto Manhattan, in the Washington Heights. And then people come and they don't, they're not understood. Can you also talk about how, you know, you and other legislators are also ensuring that these um, folks are helped in, in language access as well? Absolutely. And a lot of the time that's with a piece of legislation, you know, an amendment into the legislation to make sure that these efforts are being distributed equitably, you know, with the language access, making sure that we have various language options. And that that was a big problem early on, um, you know, when the, the sites first started, this Washington Heights site in particular, then it was in a location that we knew is predominantly black and brown. But when we saw who was receiving the vaccine, it was white New Yorkers from out of the neighborhood. So that means that we have a problem in reaching these communities and educating them because we know, I'm, I'm sure many of us know people that are still having concerns, not trusting the vaccine, you know, wanting to wait to get it, but we need to give the facts. And that's what, you know, a lot of my legislator uh, partners have been doing, holding forums. Um, I've had a few and, you know, sharing the information out there, but in people's language. So at least in my area, um, I've supported a grant that Bronx House Community Center is uh, applying for, which I believe this trillion dollars, you know, a couple, couple of the money will come to it to help um, provide educational outreach to various uh, language speaking communities, you know, in Russian and Albanian and Arabic, uh, Spanish, of course. But it's really important that we're giving all the facts to everybody in the way that they need it to be told to them. Right. And how are you and other electeds ensuring that the first people being served are Bronxites? And like, is that being monitored now? Um, you know, a lot of people coming in from outside of the borough, taking advantage of the vaccine being offered here. Yes, now it's certainly being monitored. Um, and unfortunately, and you know, understanding that with the first day of everything and the start of new things, there might be some hiccups, there might be some um, you know, areas that need improvements. And that's what happened even at the vaccine site of Bronx River Houses. I visited the one that uh, the governor's office started right there in Bronx River Houses. And the first day of, you know, the shots to be administered, there was two lines into the building. So I'm like, why is there one line? What's this other line? And one line was the Bronx residents that were outreached by the NYCHA uh, directors to say, okay, Bronx residents have first dibs on, on these vaccines, sign up and let's come. But then there was a glitch that Somos Care um, had put the link on their website, sign up for a vaccine at this location. So there were people that had registered online from everywhere coming to this one location. And then there were people that, you know, were from Bronx River houses ready to take their vaccine. So those glitches have been uh, cleared up and, you know, it's very strict. If you are a Bronx resident coming to this Bronx uh, vaccine location, you must show proof of residency and whatever else, else you have to. But those uh, issues are being worked out and we're really putting effort to make sure that the vaccines that come to a neighborhood in the Bronx are for the people in that neighborhood in the Bronx and just in the Bronx in general. Assembly Member Fernanda, something else that I read is that your office was offering PCR testing as well. Can you just share more information on that and when you'll be offering it? Absolutely. Um, as much as we're trying to get the information out and get the, the access out to get the vaccine, uh, it's still very important for Bronx sites to frequently get tested until they do get the vaccine. 
Um, it's you know important to know your status. We're trying to control the spread and getting your test and knowing that status helps to do that. So my office will be offering uh, free COVID testing on March 24th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We welcome walk-ins. So if you are around, we're located at 2018 Williams Bridge Road, Bronx, New York, 10461. And you can also make an appointment if you wanna plan your, your visit by calling us at 718-409-0109. Thank you so much, Assemblymember Fernandez, for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Again, for more information on your nearest vaccination site and check your eligibility, make an appointment and more, you can visit vaccinefinder.nyc.gov. We'll be right back with OpenBXRX.